Welcome to American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and today's title is Reagan, the movie, how the MAGA GOP has abandoned his ideals. Uh, went to the Reagan movie last week, and um, normally when I go to the movie, there's maybe four people during a matinee. Uh, this was a different uh, time and place. The movie house was packed. Uh, presumably, most of those that went to this movie were um, Republicans. Whether they're MAGA Republicans or good old-fashioned GOP Republicans, I didn't take a survey, but I do know this. Uh, they, they came and filled the seats, and it was well attended. Uh, during the movie, I was thinking, as I was watching the movie, about the chronology of uh, Ronald Reagan's life, and I was thinking, I wonder how they feel about supporting Trump and his positions, his ideals, follow his words, in comparison to Ronald Reagan, who was a man who was a very stringent anti-Russian communist, and you know, junk, you know, compare that to um, the love of Putin with Trump, and then of course Reagan's uh, strong position that the United States should defend democracy worldwide uh, versus Trump's uh, let's make the United States an isolationist nation. And last but not least, the most glaring um, comparison is Ronald Reagan was a decent human being. He had strong convictions, moral convictions, and he was a decent man. Compare that to Trump, we know there's a vast difference. And that's what I wanted to talk about the show today, is how people are, that went to that movie and saw the, the life of Ronald Reagan and now compare that with their, their, their loyalty to Donald Trump and or um, their ability to vote for Donald Trump. And with me to discuss that is my special esteemed guest, Chuck Crumpton, and as always, my co-host, Jay Fidel. Gentlemen, good morning. Morning. Jim, Jay? Uh, Jay, in my introduction, I just mentioned three things that Ronald Reagan was known to be very, very um, strong with, and that was his uh, position against the anti-communists. He didn't like communists, and certainly uh, his his viewpoints that the, the United States should be a leader in the preservation of democracy, not as an isolationist nation that wants to get out of NATO. Um, your thoughts about that comparison? If you remember Ronald Reagan, that was 40 some odd years ago. I didn't dislike him. I felt bad that uh, there was an attempt to assassinate him, especially from a guy from Hawaii, that was trouble. But um, uh, looking at the uh, materials on the web over this movie, I, I understand and accept what you've said. Uh, he was good natured, uh, and he was a, a good statement of a Republican because what he what he said, the positions he took, he really felt that way. He wasn't lying. Uh, he was advancing his um, you know notions about these things, and that made it credible. Uh, I think he was a credible president. Not only that, but you know, and it, this had nothing to do with the fact that he was in Hollywood for a while. Um, his experience as governor of California and his general ability to communicate was was visible in this movie. I mean, and and uh, it is visible whatever you look at uh, regarding Ronald Reagan. So uh, I, I would say there's no comparison whatsoever because he was faithful to his own beliefs. Uh, he was um, honest as to his own beliefs. He was honest with people. He wasn't manipulating anything. Um, and he cared about the country, he cared about good policy, and he was able to communicate that. I really, looking back, I liked him more <laughs> now <laughs> than I did at the time. <laughs> and maybe that's because of the comparison or the lack of comparison that you make, Tim. Um, you know, for, for anyone to suggest that there's a comparison between Trump and Reagan is ridiculous. You know, you know, I would say to Trump, hey, Trump, you're no Ronald Reagan. Well, that's the tagline of the show is you're no Ronald Reagan. Ronald to Donald, right? Right. That's exactly. <laughs> Jay, what if you're a if you're a current Republican and I'm not saying MAGA Republican, I'm just saying the good old fashioned Republicans of the Ronald Reagan years and the, you know, the Bush senior days. Uh, how what kind of a personality twist are you are you 
conducting upon yourself when you watch a movie like uh, the Reagan movie and remembering what Ronald Reagan was about, what he stood for, what he believed in, and comparing that to what your choices are for this election, and that's Donald Trump. To what degree do you think they're twisting in their seat? I know it's a subjective question, but uh, I've, I've tried to put myself in those, those shoes of those Republicans, and it doesn't feel good. I think, you know, what, what is uh, Trump's slogan? Uh, you know, let's go back to the good old days. This, this was the good old days for Republicans. You know, and if you were even a middle of the road Republican and you, uh, you, you were in that theater, you would say, gee, this is, this is what I have. This is what I like about the Republican Party in those times. He was likable. He was likable. He was an affable fellow. You know, he came on talk shows and made jokes. He engaged with, with regular people. Um, and uh, all I can say is he was an affable personality. Um, and and the, thus, the party and his administration was, to, I'm sure there were crises here and there, as there always are, but um, I, I think the party was popular in those days. So um, if I were a Republican sitting next to you in that, the, that theater, I would say, hmm, you know, those were the good old days. And I am so sorry that we, we have shoved off from those days. And that what we have now under the guise of Republican is nothing like the way it was in those days. And the, the, the difference, the contrast is so, is so shocking um, that I would have to think, gee whiz, I'm, I'm sorry what's happened here. This got away from me, it got away from us, and now we have people who have hijacked the Republican Party. They've hijacked everything that Reagan stood for. Thank you, Jay. Hey, Chuck, you know, Ronald Reagan, one of his, um, what people will remember is the fact that he took uh, conservatism and he was able to communicate it in such a way that it was uh, perceived as being very uh, optimistic and looking forward to the future and the future of America. Um, that's what I remember of Ronald Reagan. Uh, he instilled confidence back in the United States. If you remember, uh, the late 70s was uh, horribly, a horrible level of stagflation, which is to say double digit inflation with uh, low economic uh, and indicators and, and, and activity. Uh, it was a horrible time. And, you know, we, he had to lead us through that. And certainly the recession that followed because of Paul Volcker. Uh, the chairman of the Fed um, increased rates. Uh, gee, I think the uh, the thirty year bond was at eighteen percent, and uh, short term lending um, was at twenty one percent. But he guided us through that time, and and we got we saw our way through it. Uh, do you think Donald Trump has any ability to take on a task like that? Maybe this is a, a question that's loaded, but uh, do you think Donald Trump has that ability to lead this country? through a horrible, horrible economic time. Uh, certainly the one that he helped create during the pandemic. I'm still starting with the from Ronald to Donald and the image that's coming to mind is a duck who actually speaks better English than P. Rump does, <clears throat> um, more understandably and more articulately. But your question is a, an important one because not only is that ability deteriorating by the second, by the minute, by the day, the competency, the coherency, the verbal and mental abilities, I mean, they're visually not deteriorating, they're disintegrating before our very eyes. Um, and it, Jay's right, Reagan was a trained actor. You would never see him in a public situation lose his composure, lose his ability to be able to conduct himself professionally. Um, his wife, on the other hand, maybe not so much. <laughs> Nancy's a different ball of wax, but, <clears throat> but the guy was a trained professional actor, speaker. There are things in which he and Trump have some common grounds. They were both very, very strongly anti-education presidents. Reagan was, as a governor, he decimated funding and support for California's higher educational system. <laughs> Trump's attacks are even much worse. But you never saw Ronald Reagan 
engage in the hostility, the viciousness, the invective, the vindictiveness, the inhumanity to others, even in his anti-communist stuff, unless your recollection is better than mine, which is extremely likely, I'm not recalling any wars during Reagan's eight years that he either initiated or expanded significantly, substantially. That's a pretty damn good foreign policy hallmark for anybody. Find another president about whom you can well, say that. I do remember some things, and there was a, an intense fear from uh, the world, not just the United States and um, its citizens, was that Ronald Reagan was pushing us to a global nuclear confrontation with Russia. Um, we worried about that. And uh, fortunately, it worked out on behalf of the United States uh, as an advantage to his tough talk with Russia or about Russia. Uh, the evil empire, and uh, some thought it was uh, very antagonistic to him to go to Berlin and say, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Uh, they were scared to death that he was going to say that because uh, he had improved uh, the relationship with uh, Mikhail Gorbachev during their, their brief meetings together. A lot. You know, and he promised to and eventually did help tear down walls of division, hey, whereas the other guy, T. Rump, has promised to, <laughs> it's never going to get Russia yeah. or Mexico or anybody yeah. else to build a southern border wall. Other uh, contrasts that come to mind as you were speaking is certainly his uh, Reagan's oratory skills skill set. Um, Trump is, as we know, he speaks at, on a fourth grade level at that, third grade more like it. Elementary kids, you know. I am. I actually am. I, I agree with that point. And my apologies to all you third graders that are watching this show. <laughs> um, I, I, I guess also a contrast was the love affair he had with Nancy Reagan and how that kind of splashed onto our, our, our you know, our TV sets in our living rooms. Um, there was a real partnership with Nancy Reagan, and certainly with Melania, there's zero. There's a you know a quick brisk whisk of the hand. Uh, when he tried to uh, hold her hand in the early days of his administration. Um, also, Ronald Reagan was a funny guy. Uh, he had a great sense of humor. And I was thinking, I don't think I've heard Donald Trump tell one funny story or one funny joke in his, as a candidate for president or certainly as president. Um, maybe your memory's better on that point. I mean, it's only logical and linguistically inevitable that somebody named T. Rump is going to wind up being the butt of the jokes instead of the speaker of the jokes. Right? Okay. And and he is, you know, whether it's the joke about the three people in the helicopter and him grabbing the first parachute and jumping out and the pilot asking the kid, eh, what are we going to do? And the kid says, no worries, he just took my backpack. You know, there's lots of T. Rump jokes out there. It's not funny. And I think... Even the press and even an increasing number of publicly announced Republicans are really sick and tired of the invective, of the insults, of the lies, of, you know, stop already. Have you got any cards left in the deck, mm -hmm. literally or figuratively? And I think the answer to that is increasingly apparently not. You know, I'll ask you this last question before I go to Jay, and that is, um, imagine you're in that theater and you remember the days of Ronald Reagan and you're living the days of Trump right now and you have an election to, that you're going to vote in. You're, you're a dedicated citizen and believes that, uh, that all citizens should vote. Um, what do you think internally is going on in their mindset? Uh, try to put yourself in their shoes as um, they're getting closer and closer to this election date and they just saw the movie Reagan and are, are acutely aware of the differences between the two individuals. Yeah, it's a great question because it asks us to look at the mental emotional set of people who consider themselves conservative Americans. I don't think that word has a lot of meaning anymore for lots of reasons, but 
And we think of when they go into that voting booth privately, individually, all by themselves on November 5th, what's going to be going on in those minds? And your question's a great one because one of the things that has to be going on, it's obvious, and the movie evokes it. I haven't even seen it, but just from the trailer, it's very nostalgic. They're going to have a lot of nostalgia. They're going to wish for who wishes for the nineties, you know, but they will when they see that movie because the 20, the twenties, these twenties offer them none of what made those times nostalgic for them. And, you know, maybe we don't need to, hope for as much understanding, as much mental acuity, as much critical thinking as we'd like to see in those Republican voters. Maybe all we really need is a strong enough sense of nostalgia to say, you know what, if we make the wrong choice, we are not going back. Jay, to on this point, um... When, when people do go to the voting booths, and I don't think this movie actually is going to hit, uh, you know, wide distribution. It looked to me like a low budget movie. It was a little, the direction was a little campy and some of the acting in the initial part of the movie was a little bit off, off kilter. Uh, but Dennis Quaid seemed to do pretty well with his role. The question is, would a movie like this um, change an individual's vote? We can only hope that it changes some votes, but... The mainstream Trumpers, they're not going to change their votes at all. What they're going to say is, oh, this was a great Republican, and Trump is a great Republican, and this is all, you know, a celebration of Trump. And it's easy for them to lie to, to themselves about this, and they will. They will. If you, you know, I don't know if you talk to anybody sitting on the left or the right in the movie theater, but I'm sure a lot of people in that theater were saying, oh, Republican, Republican, good for the Republican Party, good for Trump. And I, you know, I would say probably most of them, most of the Trumpers uh, who saw the movie, who are seeing the movie, who will see the movie, are going to come away with that. Okay? But I want to add something else. You know, We talk about voting. We talk about the voting booth. We talk about how much we like Kamala Harris and all this. We talk about what kind of a nutcase uh, Trump is. We talk about the strange things in the media, but we, we're not really talking about the undercurrents here. There are, there are conspiracies going on to suppress vote, votes in many states. There are uh, conspiracies among state legislatures and state legislators and Congress. You know, and it, it, was it was it any surprise that none of the the leaders, the Republican leaders in Congress, have said boo about those kids killed in Georgia today? And Trump never said boo about it. I mean, they're still tightly compacted around their conspiracy um, on the Second Amendment. <clears throat> and so we have that, it's kind of a, you know, it's a, it's a conspiracy that Trump has perfected. So he's got two levels going on. One is the, the crazy things he says to the media. You know, he's a media man. And on the other side, he's got, he's got his hands, we talked about this, his hands behind his back, and he's wrecking the country directly or through proxies. And the articles in the papers today, both the Post and the Times, uh, suggest that um, he's also involved in conspiracies where uh, Putin um, and the uh, what, the Ayatollah, whatever, in, in Iran, um, and um, and Xi Jinping, and possibly North Korea, are all sending gobs of propaganda. Um, through social media, through phony organizations that sound like they're democratic, into those red states to confirm that they will vote for him, or they will participate in some kind of conspiracy to suppress the votes of others. And this is a global conspiracy. This is a a a, a war against the United States that has gone global. It started in the U.S. 
It started, you know, it was revealed, let me say, by Trump. It bounced around among our enemies, so to speak, our adversaries overseas, and now they're using it against us. So yes, we can make fun of him and talk about how he's deteriorating. Uh, we can catch him on all kinds of lies and ridiculous statements. But the bottom line is, uh, what is really going to happen on November 5th or after November 5th? Um, we're dealing with a much larger problem than what he says in his machinations in his reality show. That's what I worry about. And I think we have to keep our eye on that ball. I don't think that Merrick Garland can do a whole lot to stop what was in the newspapers today, um, but maybe, just maybe, he'll figure it out. In any event, we here, we should recognize it. Tim, we should do a show about it. We should try to figure out what's happening under the hood, because it's worse than we imagined. Yeah, well, we've seen uh, attempts to um, adjust, I won't say rig, um, elections 2016 with the help of Russia. Uh, certainly, uh, there was interference in 2020. Uh, why would 2024 be any different? Uh, the good news is that uh, it's being recognized, and that's half the battle. Uh, interesting enough about elections, Donald Trump is uh, telling the GOP, particularly the um, the House, that they um, they should shut down the government. Uh, that's coming up, that vote, and that they should shut it down if um, if they don't get a new election bill passed. And what is that election bill? 60 some odd days away from uh, the election date. And that is a, a verification that everyone's a citizen before they vote. Well, 60 days before an election is pretty tough because there are a lot of people that don't have proper identification. And in order to prove that you're a citizen takes a lot of work. And there's a lot of seniors that don't have that paperwork. Uh, the time to suggest a rule like that would have been three years in advance not 60 days. So that's what Donald Trump is up to as far as uh, his um, meddling in the election fairs is to insist that uh, a, a, <clears throat> a law be passed that you have to present evidence that you're a, a U.S. citizen before you can vote. Isn't that something? And a chief election official on public TV last night said that's where the battle is going to be. It's not on the voting itself only, but also on the certifications that they're attacking at both ends of the process. Hey, and that law you just cited, that bill, hopefully won't become law, is based on an absolute lie without any support that significant numbers or any significant amount of non-citizens are voting. It's not happening. He refuted that. He said, we have checked, we have double checked, we have triple checked in every single state. It's not true. It's not happening. Well, they love to use that one that immigrants pour across the border and they're getting their driver's licenses. And with that driver's license, they're getting access to the voting booth. Um, that's, that's, their, that's their favorite go-to um, misnomer. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. All ports in the storm. I mean, he's operating on so many different levels, and his friends and colleagues and associates and acolytes around him are worse than the ones before. And they are thinking of all kinds of illegal and uh, ir ir irrational and horrible things to do to mess up the country. So, you know, going back to the theater, Tim, Charles, uh, I, I, I want to say that you cannot, in, in your wildest imagination, think that Ronald Reagan would ever have done any of this. He was a right. patriot. He was a patriot. And if you remember the, the feeling of the country back then, patriotism was a little bit on the low side. Not a little bit, a lot of bit. Um, we had those who were being held captive in Iran. Um, there was a failed attempt to free them. The helicopter crashed. Uh, patriotism was really on the, on the low ebb of, of um, where we were, you know, after Ronald Reagan took over, he really did pump up the nation quite a bit. And um, I, I was impressed with that. I don't like necessarily wrapping myself around the American flag, but he was able to do it in a way that was uh, respectful. And it wasn't taking advantage of, uh, you know, positions and, 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 and um, policies by simply wrapping the flag around it. 
So I, by the way, one of the things I, I didn't mention in my introduction about the, my experience in this uh, theater was there were times where I heard sniffling and I looked from one side to the other and I saw, um, and they're older people, uh, but they were wiping their eyes. I haven't seen that since, uh, <laughs> I don't remember when. Uh, people having an emotional response to a movie. And certainly I, haven't, I don't recall seeing a movie theater that were, there wasn't a seat available. I haven't seen that in years. We're gonna wrap it up, but um, this movie did have an impact, I think, on those who, who witnessed the movie. And it's my hope that um, they remember who Ronald Reagan was, what he stood for. And um, maybe, just maybe, they, they, they vote, but maybe they write in a candidate's name. Maybe they write in Liz Cheney, or they write in, um, you know, one of their favorite uh, comic characters. Who knows who they write in? But that would be an acceptable alternative than holding one's nose and voting for someone they can't stand. So, uh, go ahead, Chuck. <laughs> I, I went off the deep end here today. Uh, your last thoughts? I don't know. I'm still stuck on the image of the quacking Donald. <laughs> As, as what we're seeing in all of his press moments now. Hey, but I think what I like about your question, your emphasis, Tim, is that we, we live in a very, very visual time. TV, social media, movies, all that stuff are visual. People love it. People identify with it. People gravitate to it. People's visual connection with others is proportionally far greater than ever in history, rather than their personal connection with others. So we can hope, taking Jay's hope and expanding on it a little bit, we can hope that all of those people who missed it up during the movie, all of those people who were moved, who were touched, who remembered things that had meaning and value to them, that those people go in with a visual image that raises the issue of choice and they make a choice. Mm -hmm. Because if anything, of all that's been said about Ronald Reagan today, and there were some down stuff, some stuff that wasn't so favorable. But if anything sticks, and he was the first Teflon president, so accorded that moniker by the media, it is that there's an element of decency and humanity here that needs to be respected and honored and it has a place in our leadership. If that glimmer of understanding comes to people in the voting booth, it will honor the famous Leonard Cohen line from the song, the anthem. Everything has a crack in it. That's how the light gets in. May there be a crack that lets the light in. Great words, Chuck. Um, from your lips to God's ears, or at least to the voters' selection. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Uh, Jay, your uh, final thoughts on this topic? I haven't examined the movie frame by frame. I did see the trailer and I read about it. But my general sense is that it did not go far enough. Uh, that maybe uh, they held back. Maybe they were trying to address this very crowd that you imagined you saw in the theater. That is, Republicans uh, or people who were Republicans in those days. But I would have appreciated, and I would still appreciate, if somebody would make the comparison flat out, not just give us nostalgia about Ronald Reagan and the things he did or didn't do, and try to take us back to our childhood, whatever. I'd like to see somebody, um, maybe the Lincoln Project, actually make the comparison. Mm -hmm. You ain't no Ronald Reagan, Trump, you know, to show what he was, what... Uh, what Reagan was, what Trump was, and the incredible differences, and, 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 and show how the Republican Party has changed. Yeah. We get a certain amount of that from the media, the bubble media around, you know, the, the, the liberal progressive side of things. Um, but I think um, we need a, a frontline movie, if you will, 
um, to make them to to complete the project, so to speak, um, to show exactly how Reagan compares with Trump. Remember, um, the Lincoln Project is filled with former Reagan supporters, even some that served in his administration. Um, what better entity to do that than the Lincoln Project? They lived it. They believed in it. And that's why they're in the Lincoln Project. Uh, they're saying no to a guy that's deplorable in his words, deplorable in his, his actions, his character is deplorable. And um, they took the stand very early on to say, never Trump. Here's the thing. Uh, and you know, you've been mm, kind of uh, all around this issue for this discussion. Uh, and that is that um, the people in that theater, the people who feel nostalgic about Ronald Reagan are the ones that are most likely to change horses now, Mo most likely to recognize the difference, most likely to see that Trump is no Reagan. And um, that's, that's a hopeful thought. And I hope that other media, other filmmakers, um, you know, accentuate those points. Uh, because th those are the ones who are vulnerable to a change of heart. Great point. Great words from both of you. I'd like to thank my esteemed guest, Chuck Crumpton. And as always, I'd like to thank Jay Fidel, my co-host, for making this a memorable uh, session of American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And why don't you join us next week? And until then, aloha.